Hey folks, let's talk about Iggy, the process of how we put this piece together. The first thing we did was some thumbnail drawings and I use crude tools like Sharpie so that I don't fall in love with the thumbnails so that I can really evaluate them and get to the heart of what I want. I selected the upper left thumbnail. I thought that'd be a cool way to go. Love that little uh, uh, swirl that was happening around her. So we did a better drawing in Photoshop, tracking down reference, looking at tons of stuff, um, lots of iguanas, and uh, oddly, uh, uh, women biting their fingers because I thought that'd show me what it'd be like to bite something and maybe give me a cool hand. We begin the drawing. We transferred that drawing you see in the upper left, that reference, lightboxed it uh, lightly um, to get the skeleton or the landmarks, and now I start the rendering process. I hadn't done a lot of that in the Photoshop stage. It doesn't really matter. I'm just using that for placement. And uh, I'm using ballpoint pen here on top of Arches oil paper. Really cool paper that you could oil paint directly on if you want to, and eventually we're gonna break out the oil paint on this. Using a Parker ballpoint pen, um, they seem to have a pretty sturdy ink uh, that works good for me. And um, we're, uh, you know, uh, using the tool for what it does best, which is a very subtle drawing. You know, when you, when you uh, work the pressure of the thing, it can fade out. It just does all these great things, almost like a pencil and within the same value range of a pencil. But, you know, the more pressure you put on it, the darker it's going to get. So you can find those nice accent areas to draw on. You can see I'm leaving the iguana uh, undetailed at this point because I want him to feel different than her. So really I'm focusing most of this, you know, grayscale rendering um, just on the main figure and we'll have a little bit more fun with Iggy the iguana. I'm looking for those little nooks and crannies to hit a little harder with the ink, a little bit darker. That's what gives your drawings volume, right? When you can find those accent areas. Um, like a drummer, t -t 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 -t. those accent areas really can help uh, give some shape to it. Okay, time for Iggy. What we're doing here is we have broken into the FW acrylic ink, which I love so much. And um, I've got a few different greens. Some of them I mixed together. I added water to a lot of them so that it would go down pretty transparent at first. Um, but then as we go, I use more and more pure straight out of the, you know, straight out of the container ink. Uh, added a little black to it in areas, or not probably not black, like a Payne's gray to the green to dirty it up so I could do some of that accenting. I have to plan ahead here. I want enough contrast that when I later put a middle value on top of the iguana, I can still see these lines. A little distracting right now because it's so contrasty with the you know dark and light being so extreme. But I know later we're gonna um, apply that middle value and we're gonna calm him down and uh, but I also know right now that I want all the detail on the iguana to be focused to his head and shoulders area, and we're gonna fade it as we run up the iguana. It's like a it's like a gradient sort of treatment of detail. I try to apply that. So there's less detail behind him on the figure, right? And there'll be less detail on him behind the figure uh, up towards his tail. I used a little white right now. The paper had a little amber color. I spattered it a bit. I wondered if it would act as a resist as I start laying down the washes that you're seeing now. Turns out it doesn't really. The acrylic ink covered it up. But using that same green that I was inking with a second ago, I'm now filling in uh, the areas. Lots of spot green. Like, uh, you know, like I really wanted the green to sizzle. Every other color is going to take a back seat to the green in this piece for the most part. Um, and the hair I knew was going to be the most difficult part. I wanted that bangs to get to that green uh, in a cool way. But let's have a little fun with this. This is coffee, dudes. I spilled coffee all over this on purpose. I love coffee. It puts down weird patterns. It's like a watercolor. Um, and uh, it neutralized that green a little bit for me, which is great, because now I can start working back into that. It also established a little bit of a middle value on the girl, or at least she got a little bit darker, um, which will give me stuff to start reacting to. But once again, I will do many times in this piece, I'm glazing or washing over the hair again. Um, bring another turquoise. I didn't want it to just be all that acidic green, so I thought, okay, we'll get some blues going on in here, especially on that tail as it goes up behind her because we want the green of her hair to be dominant over the tail. And if the tail was as acidic as the green of the hair, well, you know, you wouldn't see it as well. 
uh, breaking out the silhouette, the negative space with white FW ink. Um, I go ahead and use it on the figure a little bit too, already thinking about where my highlights are gonna go as we proceed with this. Still all acrylic ink here. Um, but really, it, it cleans up the outer edge of the figure and lets me understand where her values are out at so I can start reacting to that. Ballpoint pin, accenting the iguana. It's funny how contrasty that inking was earlier, but now with the middle value there, I need to accent it more and I need to go in a little bit darker. Also wanted some blue in there. Idea was to get his values to really pop off her shoulder. That was a little distracting at the bottom there with the scratchiness or the dirtiness of the dress, so I just wanted to flatten that a little bit again. I'm trying to not pull attention away from the iguana. Now we are FW inking the iguana with probably straight paints, gray almost it looks like, maybe a little bit of green added to it. We're finding those nooks and crannies, those little accent park parts. Um, that's what we're looking for. We're really trying to round them out. And man, if you can find those nooks and crannies, it just does such a good job to help push and pull um, your drawings, the form of your drawings around. Imagine if I had done that every line on that iguana that dark, he wouldn't have nearly the volume that he does. Now we're using the same inks and we're going in with the Nico dip pin. Again, that's what we're using here, Nico dip pin. And we're hitting some more accent marks. You're having a conversation with the piece live, right? You're trying to react. I do a little something here, and then the painting's like, oh, that's cool, but now you gotta do this because you did that. You gotta stay open to it. It's very hard to have a plan, or at least for me, to have like, this is my plan, I will stay to it all the way through my piece. Um, no, I gotta, I gotta have a live conversation with it and be flexible enough to make adjustments. Transitioning that green bangs to the kind of wine brown like color of her hair was the hardest part of this piece. Getting that transition in there um, was very tough. Now we get to have some fun popping in some really acidic green, popping in the eyes, popping in a few highlights on our girl. And I know I'm getting close to the finish line here. I'm feeling like, okay, when I'm getting to this stage where I'm busting out those highlights. But I did want to create a little bit more volume. So what you're gonna see here is I'll wind up adding some of that turquoise into the iguana. Um, Cause I find that when the green is so like warm, here it is, when the green is so warm, you can really round out your stuff if you just balance that with a little bit of the something cool in the shadows. Okay, dress design. Um, I wanted to look like scales. I also wanted to pull some of that really hot yellow green um, from the top down to the bottom. So you can see it's almost like a, it's almost like a gradient. So much I think in gradients. Like the big mass of green up in her hair and those glasses a little bit less uh, down on the iguana and then really thin lines of it down at the bottom. And here we go folks, doing the final highlighting. We use some white enamel and some oil paint at this point to just do our final little bit um, of popping. And there it is. Oh, she wrote. Okay, thanks for following along. Till next time.